Welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Nama KPSC. So in this particular video, we'll actually be discussing about adaptation and certain other concepts associated with it. Okay. Now, this is not a very complicated topic. These are all things more or less connected to evolution. So here, when we refer to adaptation, adaptation is nothing but the biological mechanism by which organisms adjust to new environments or changes to the current environment. Now, this is nothing but to help the organism to better fit into its environment for survival. So, this adaptation may be with respect to the structure, the physiology, the genetics, the locomotion, the defense, attack, reproduction, development, etc. So what we'll go what we'll do is it we'll actually go through some of the adaptations which are actually seen in nature. So we will basically classify the adaptations into three types that is physiological, structural and behavioral and we'll go through these three one by one. Okay. So the first is physiological. Now very simple. The physiological adaptation refers to body processes that helps an organism to survive or reproduce. For example, take Tibetans. So in this particular image, you should be able to see Tibetans. Now, Tibetans actually thrive at high altitudes where the oxygen level is 40%, 40% lower than at sea level. So breathing air at uh, breathing air that thin would make most of us sick. But the bodies of Tibetans have actually evolved through changes in their body chemistry through genetic mutations that allow them to use oxygen far more efficiently without the need for extra hemoglobin. See, we can also survive at high altitudes where the body will increase the level of hemoglobin that is the protein that transfers oxygen in blood. But this is temporary because increased levels of hemoglobin can also be dangerous. Therefore, such temporary adaptations are not true adaptations and it is known as acclimatization. I hope you are able to differentiate between adaptations and acclimatization. Acclimatization is nothing but adaptation to a particular environment temporarily. So, for example, if you go to Tibet, your body should be able to adapt to such conditions temporarily. But such conditions, sorry, such adaptations will not be permanent. Whereas those changes which the body has incorporated for a longer duration, they are known as adaptations. So, adaptations will not happen in a few days. It will take a longer duration for it to take place. Uh, another very good example is obviously hibernation where animals in order to uh, what do you call as protect themselves from the winter cold in order to conserve heat they actually bring down their metabolic rate and they actually go into sleep. So these are very good examples when it comes to physiological adaptations where they change the metabolism within the body in order to suit the changes in the environment. Okay, so next is adaptations itself. Here we are going to discuss about the structural or morphological adaptations. Now this is with respect to a feature of an organism's body. Take a giraffe for example in this particular image over here. So what happened was that when food became scarce on the ground, and trees grew taller, the giraffe's neck also got longer. So this is a kind of adaptation to help the giraffes to survive where they ensure that they are able to access more food every day. So this is an adaptation. It is a morphological or structural adaptation to its surrounding environment. Similarly, you can have aquatic animals 
which actually grow fins which are required to swim you can have some animals like a uh, uh, like a zebra like a wildebeest a chameleon which are able to camouflage which is another very good example of adaptations you can have mimicry a very important example for structural adaptations mimicry is where some organisms physically appear and behave like another animal to fool the predators to think that it is dangerous or poisonous so in this particular image you should be able to see two snakes one is the coral snake which is venomous the other is the king snake which is non venomous now what the king snake is doing is that the king snake is mimicking the coral snake so what will happen is many other animals or many other predators which might feed on the king snake or which might attack the king snake will mistake the king snake for a coral snake and therefore will leave the king snake alone now the king snake is not dangerous the king snake is not venomous but the coral snake is but the king snake is mimicking the coral snake in order to protect itself now this is another adaptation which is going to help it to survive which is necessary for survive survival now this is another very good example i am pretty sure you would have seen a praying mantis now in this particular image over here the praying mantis is mimicking its surrounding environment now this is a slightly different from camouflage now what it is doing is that it is entirely mimic it is not just trying to hide it is also trying to mimic its surrounding environment so therefore many other organisms will find it difficult to identify and detect the praying mantis therefore it is essential therefore it becomes easier for it to survive and escape from predators so these are all examples of structural adaptations or morphological adaptations next this is the third type of adaptation that is behavioral adaptation now behavior uh, behavioral adaptation refers to the responses made by an organism that helps it to survive or reproduce the best example is migration where birds from higher latitudes or siberia they actually migrate to escape the winter cold similarly you should be able to see uh, these emperor peng uh, penguins in this particular image what these penguins in antarctica do is that they crowd together they stay very close to each other so that they are able to share their warmth in that cold environment so these are all behavioral adaptations which helps species to survive more in a comfortable manner however you have to remember that animal adaptations are various and extensive but will have limitations however eventually something will come along to replace them and this is due to the limitations in adaptive abilities see uh, as of today many species struggle to return to the numbers that they once enjoyed because humans have killed many animals directly or indirectly to near extinction this is especially true due to rapidly changing environment take bangalore for example now many of the birds that we used to see during our childhood days like sparrows vultures crows eagles are hardly seen these days because they were not able to adapt to the modernizing uh, human environment or this urban environment at the same time pigeons on the other hand have increased drastically because they can adapt and they have adapted to the human environment and as of today pigeons are considered to be could be considered to be pests in urban areas where they have increased to such a number so these are all adaptations which are necessary for survival okay next we'll take up something known as variations now the differences in characteristics between individuals of the same species is called variation this variation may be shown in physical appearance metabolism fertility mode of reproduction behavior etc so these variations actually uh, these variations also help species to survive by causing individuals 
by causing individuals of a species to be genetically and physically different. See, if all the individuals of a species were genetically identical, they would be vulnerable to a particular disease. So, if this were the case, a single disease could wipe out an entire species and therefore you have variations which are actually developed and in order to bring about more variations organisms have actually developed or come up with come out with sexual mode of reproduction so what we will do is that we will classify these variations into four types okay so we have inherited or environmental variations and we can also have continuous or discontinuous variation now the first one is inherited variation now if the characteristics are a result of genetic information from the parents then it is inherited variation so your eye color the skin color the hair color now these are all inherited variations the skin color uh, in the tropical regions we need more melanin to protect ourselves from ultraviolet rays so we here within the tropical regions we generally have darker skin so this is inherited variation similarly we can have environmental variation now if the characteristics are a result of outside environment climate diet culture lifestyle then these are known as environmental variations so for say for example this might determine your immunity based on the kind of access that you have to medicine or vaccines for example or a person could be undernourished or obese based on the diet or nutrition that the person is able to receive the learning ability due to education so the outside environment may also decide the kind of body shape of a particular organism for example and therefore we can have people of varying body sizes depending upon their outside environment now at, to some extent it could also depend upon the body, uh, the genetics but at the same time environment also plays a very very important role so these are known as environmental variations next continuous variations now characteristics characteristics that change gradually over a range of values is known as continuous variations say for example if you take height or weight now if you consider the height and weight of all individuals on earth it will obviously vary drastically it could be anywhere from less than 130 cm to more than 200 cm if required so this there is no fixed there is no fixed value there is no it can vary drastically so this is known as continuous variation at the same time if you come if you compare this to discontinuous variation characteristics with only a limited number of possible values they are known as discontinuous variations i hope now you should be able to understand continuous means where the range of values is more and whenever the range is limited in nature it is known as discontinuous variations for example the type of blood group that you may have gender for example it can it can be say it can be male or female or eye color which which has certain limitations it cannot be different colors it cannot you cannot have rainbow colors when it comes to your eye color so this is known as discontinuous variations okay next we move on to adaptive radiation now when it comes to evolutionary biology adaptive radiation is a process in which organisms diversify rapidly from an ancestral species into a multitude of new forms particularly when a change in the environment makes new resources available creates new challenges or opens new environmental niches starting with a recent single ancestor this process results in speciation and phenotypic adaptation of an array of species exhibiting different morphological and physiological traits for example take the adaptive radiation in galapagos finches now this is a type of bird or types of birds now which are which is uh, which are actually found in this 
uh, island by the name Galapagos in the Pacific Ocean. So now, as of now, there are around 14 species of Galapagos finches. Now, the 14 species of Galapagos finches actually evolved from a common ancestor with different shapes of beaks or bills suited to different diets and habitats. So here you should be able to see all the different species of finches. Now all the finches actually evolved from the same ancestor. But as they evolved depending upon the habitat, depending upon the food which is available to them, they have specialized their beaks. They have varied. So variations have been brought about and this is nothing but to suit the different diets and habitats. So this is the example for adaptive radiation where they are actually adapting to the surrounding environment as well. Now this is generally seen when a new habitat actually opens up such as a new island due to underwater volcano or a bare rock is now exposed uh, after uh, the retreat, uh, uh, when the glaciers start to retreat. These are just few examples. So this is known as adaptive radiation. Uh, so, there are few other topics like evolution, mutation, speciation, which are connected to what we have discussed today. Now, these topics I will continue in the next video. If you do have any doubts, please do write in the comment section. Thank you.